Well, it turns out that you guys really liked it when I put a GoPro in a lobster trap. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do it again. We're gonna put another GoPro in a lobster trap. Today I'm heading out on the lobster boat, gonna put a GoPro in the lobster trap. I don't know what's gonna show up. You don't know what's gonna show up. Let's go find out. Buckle up. Don't forget to subscribe and like and all that fun stuff. Let's go. We are splashing into another episode of Seaside Nomad. So I saw that the last episode where I put a GoPro in a lobster trap did really well. That was my best performing video so far on my channel. So I'm doing it again. I'm putting another GoPro in a lobster trap. While that last episode was in May, this is now June. The water's warmed up a little bit, so my GoPro actually lasted a little longer. And it's an overcast day, so instead of putting it out deep, we put it in about 15 feet of water. And unfortunately, the visibility is kind of low. This is actually not uncommon here in New England, but the visibility is only a couple of feet. So you can't see everything that's going on in the background. Occasionally, you'll see a Pollock swim by or a Cunner, but it was hard to get a good shot of those. And just like that last episode, I put a good luck charm in the trap. This is a red bottle opener. It's on the top right there. It's about two inches long, and it will give you some perspective on how big the lobsters are. So for this video, I'll be speeding stuff up, I'll be slowing stuff down, and I'll be showing you guys the highlights. So 11 minutes have gone by, and the lobster trap has gotten its first lobster. It comes charging in. This guy is aggressive, very energetic. He's going to be the main character of this story today. And uh, he's just all about it. He's hungry. He's looking to try to get to that bait. So somebody commented on the last video about how it was kind of sad that the lobster doesn't get a final meal. So in this case, the lobster trap is only in the water for about an hour and a half, but usually it's in the water for days. So within those couple of days, the lobsters will get in and they will actually eat all the bait down to the bones. So most of the time you pull out the bait bag and it's just full of bones. So they get to the food, it just takes them a little while to get through that mesh. Also, occasionally you'll see little rock crabs in the video. They're kind of hard to see because they're so small. So I'm gonna speed this up about eight times the normal speed so that we can skip around to the highlights. And just so you can say you learned something today, the bigger claw, the meatier looking one, that's the crusher claw. And if it's on the right side, that means that the lobster is right side dominant. So basically, whatever side the crusher claw is on means that that lobster either is right-handed or it could be left-handed. So in this case, we have a right-handed lobster. The smaller claw is used for cutting and it's the pinchers and it's on the left side for this lobster. Now, I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you guys like eating lobster? And if so, how do you like it? Do you like the lobster rolls? Or do you just like steaming it and then cracking the shell yourself? Go ahead and let me know in the comments.
At this point, you can see a cunner swimming in the background. I should probably mention too that this is a two trap trawl. So you'll see there's a rope attaching this trap to another trap. And then those are both attached to another rope that goes to the buoy. So when you pull up the lobster buoy, you are going to pull up the first trap and then this trap. That makes it a two trap trawl. Now what a lot of people don't know is that a lot of lobsters that you catch, you end up throwing back in the water. So if it's a female that has eggs, those are called eggers, you put those back in the water. Also if you catch a female and it has a notch in one of its tail fins, that means that somebody caught that lobster before, saw that it had eggs, and then put a notch in one of the tail fins so that other people would know that this lobster is a breeder. In that case, you put those ones back in the water as well. And then also, if the lobster is too small, or even if it's too big, you have to put it back in the water as well. So it really kind of gives you a bit of a slot limit. And depending where you are, you measure the lobsters by using a lobster gauge. And here's an example of what a lobster gauge could look like. Now, of course, the rules and regulations are probably different where you are, so definitely look those up. I'm simply just speaking in generalities. This is pretty cool. If you watch, a very small cunner swims into the trap, takes a quick look around, and then just skates off. So far, our lobster has had this bait all to himself. But at the 59 minute mark, another lobster shows up. So, who do we think is going to win this battle? That new lobster didn't stand a chance against our lobster. He's a tough dude. And if you're wondering what we're using for bait, we're using pogies. Pogies have a really good oily scent and the lobsters just follow their nose right to the bait bag. The bait bags aren't usually packed this much, but since there's a GoPro in this lobster trap, the more the better. The GoPro has been in the water for about an hour 20 and we are showing up. We're about ready to pick up that buoy and start pulling up that lobster trap. If this is your first video from me, check out my other ones. I've got other lobster trap videos, fishing videos, traveling videos, kayaking videos. I'm all about doing outdoor stuff and I'm all about traveling.
And if you have any lobster or fishing related questions, go ahead and ask them. Put them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. If you like what you saw today, give it a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And I'll catch you guys later.